With us this morning uh, on WSBA, a uh, person who's been a voice uh, from the state legislature loud and clear during this uh, COVID-19 time. Uh, she is State Representative Dawn Kiefer from the 92nd Legislative District. Good morning, Dawn. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing well. How are you doing? Well, doing very well. We have you for a couple segments this morning. wanted to check with you on a few things. Uh, number one, the, the U.S. Supreme Court uh, declined to lift Governor Wolf's business shutdown order on uh, Wednesday of this week. That kind of went by unnoticed for a lot of people, but uh, they decided not even to take up the case. And uh, obviously a number of business people had had brought this case. Uh, Monday the governor responded saying, well, you know, the Supreme Court should not take this up because it would serve as a precedent for you know other people nationally. And I guess the, the, the question I want to ask you this morning, and I know you've been fairly critical at, during this time, how long should a governor have emergency powers before there is some oversight on them? Uh, you know, it, it's a lot of power to have in the hands of a few people, and that's not how our country or our state was structured. So your thoughts on that? Honestly, I think it should be zero, quite frankly. I mean, I appreciate the emergency powers, but the way that Pennsylvania's emergency powers are written are are too uh, broad and too vague. It gives them too much powers. And I have legislation, actually, that amends that um, law, Act 35. But, um, you know, 30 days should be max, and he should have to come back to the General Assembly at that point and, uh, you know, for for some checks and balances, regardless of any kind of executive order. What kind of role uh, should the uh, state legislature have? I saw the, the governor came out the other day with this civilian core idea. And, and I, I just, I, again, I'm not... I'm not being uh, personally critical of the government, but, you know, I think we need to be uh, positively skeptical, I think, of any kind of things that are passed, either by you as a legislature or by the governor in terms of an order. And I'm looking at that, and I'm thinking that civilian core uh, idea, is that a legislative responsibility or is that an executive responsibility? And I understand from one of the representatives that, that you only got word of that like four minutes before the governor came out with that in a press conference. So your thoughts about that? Again, that's legislative, and I agree. We did. We got we got minutes notice on it, and that is not something that really should be within the jurisdiction of of the governor. It needs to be in the general assembly's hands. We need a lot more checks and balances. This is it's gotten out of hand, um, and people are really at their tipping point. And I just think this demonstrates how disconnected he and his administration are that they don't realize how hard they're pushing. The governor doesn't necessarily seem to be hearing you in the legislature and he continues to fight back uh and say this is my responsibility uh obviously he did that with his response to uh justice alito's uh request for information on monday uh in a 43 page uh, thing that he sent back and uh, the supreme court uh, apparently he could take that as an agreement by not taking up the case because that is maybe a state kind of part of this whole federalist system but um when you look at this, would it not have been better to have the governor working in concert with all of you uh, as opposed to working separately from all of you? Exactly. And that's what we keep saying. There is no collaboration at all. And we are really the boots on the ground, right? The governor can't be everywhere in the state. It's a big state. So why would he not be collaborating with all of us? It, that's been part of it, that he doesn't get it. And so he makes these decisions uh, with no collaboration, no input. He's not even involving stakeholders. These are all being made in a silo with his administration. And then we're left to deal with all the constituents and to suffer the consequences. So there's got to be, I don't, regardless of party affiliation, he's not even collaborating with the Democrats to to organize any of this. This is all him in a silo. And it's his condescending attitude that he knows what's best for us. And we might not like it, but too bad. We're too stupid to know any better. And he's going to tell us how it's all going to work. Well, I can and understand where that... Yeah, I can understand where that perception comes from because I think a lot of people have that. Again, I don't know what's in the governor's heart or mind, and I'm not, you know, I, I know the governor personally over the years. But 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 point being, you know, the perception of your actions is really what we're looking at here. And for a lot of people, I think there has been pressure brought to bear on the governor, and I think he maybe has moved on some things now a little quicker than not. I understand a new list of the yellow areas that may come to pass here is going to be coming out today during his press conference of course we have 24 counties opening up i guess today 
Um, your, your thoughts about this and how this is all coming about with the reopening of Pennsylvania, so to speak. So I'm going to tell you, uh, Gary, that last night my phone imploded after his 8 o'clock press conference. Why did he? Why at that point is he just making the announcement? He had a press conference earlier in the day. He couldn't have included that information. So you drop another bomb on Pennsylvanians, and then you go to bed at 8 o'clock at night. My constituents are infuriated right now because they took that as we're, we're on lockdown in York County until June 4th, and they're not going to, mm-hmm. they, they're not going to take it. They're not going to take it. It, it is, they are over the top. He's pushed them over the edge. And, again, you put out that little piece of information and say, tomorrow I'll let you know we're going to open up some more counties. They're going to go to red. It's this whole process. Um, and he keeps changing his mind and changing decisions. And he says he's using science and data to make these decisions. However, we used his metric, and it should, that clearly demonstrates that York should be in yellow, and yet we're not. So clearly he's not using science and data. Um, our hospitals are prepared. Our nursing homes, we in York County have one of the lowest uh, nursing home rates in the state as far as um, um, incident cases and deaths. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're not struggling with that issues. We have capacity. There's no reason that we're still in red, but we are. So it's, it's clearly not data driven. And, and today he's going to come out and make an announcement where there's some more. And it's by understanding all the southwest corner clear over it's going to stop at Franklin County. All the rest is going to um, it's going to open up the rest of that. So you're going to open up Allegheny County, but not York County? Right. Tell me yeah, the Allegheny County, where you find Pittsburgh. Right. So State Representative Dawn Kiefer from the 92nd Legislative District.